Welcome to Essentials of Acute Care. I am Dr. Sunil Garg. In this video, I will be discussing Infectious Disease Society of America's guidelines on treatment of gram-negative antimicrobial resistant organism. I have made several videos in the past regarding management of gram-negative antimicrobial resistant infection based on IDSA guidelines 2023. Here I will discuss only what is new in update 2024 compared to 2023 guidelines. There are mainly four updates for the ESBL enterobacterial infection like infections due to ESBL producing Escheria, Klebsiella and Enterobacter. These are number one, Phosphomycin continues to not be suggested for pyelonephritis and complicated urinary tract infections due to the organism. Number two, amoxicillin clavulinic acid continues to not be a preferred agent for uncomplicated ESBL producing cystitis. Number three, piperacillin tazobactam continues to not be preferred for the treatment of pyelonephritis and complicated UTI. And number four, a new update includes that septolo gene tazobactam is likely to be effective against ESBL enterobacterials. However, it is suggested that this agent be reserved for the treatment of DTR, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, or polymicrobial infection where the infection is due to both DTR, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and ESBL enterobacterials. For AMTC beta lactamase producing enterobacterials, there are mainly two updates. It is clarified in update that even without upregulation of AMPC production, Basal production of it with inducible AMPC expression such as in Enterobacter cloicae, Citrobacter frundi and Classilla aerogens, it leads to intrinsic resistance to ampicillin, amoxicillin clavulinic acid, ampicillin sulbactam and first and second generation cephalosporins. Second update is the suggestion that Cephipime is not advised for AMPC producing enterobacterials like Enterobacter cloicae, Citrobacter frundi, and Classella aerogens when Cephipime MIC is 4 to 8 microgram per ml. This was because of concerns for increased risk of ESBL production in this Cephipime MIC range. This has been removed in 2024 update since available data do not suggest there is a clear association between cephepime susceptible dose dependent MIC of 4 to 8 microgram per ml and ESBL production. The new update regarding CRE infection is about dosing suggestion for septazidine avivectum in combination with estreonam. Both agents are suggested to be administered every 8 hourly over 3 hours via Y-site administration to facilitate simultaneous administration of both medication. For DTR, Pseudomonas aeruginosa means difficult to treat resistance Pseudomonas aeruginosa, there are mainly two updates. For infections caused by such organism which are not susceptible to any carbapenem agent but susceptible to traditional beta-lactam agent like cephepime. Administration of a traditional agent as high dose extended infusion therapy continues to be suggested. Once daily tobramycin or amycacin is added as an alternative treatment options for pyelonephritis or complicated UTI caused by such organism given the prolonged duration of activity of these agents in the renal cortex and the convenience of once daily dosing. For the crab infection, or carbapenem resistant acinetobacter pomony infection, there are mainly three updates. Update number one, the sulbactam radlobactam in combination with meropenem or imipenem slash statin is added as the preferred agent for the treatment of crab infection, replacing 2023 recommendation of high dose ampicillin sulbactam in combination with another agent as a preferred therapy. Second update is high dose ampicillin sulbactam in combination with at least one other agent has been changed from a preferred to an alternative regime if sulbactam darlobactam is not available. 
and the third update is the suggested dosing of the high dose ampicillin sulbectam has been adjusted to be 27 grams of ampicillin sulbectam it means 18 grams of ampicillin and 9 grams of sulbectam daily changing it from the 2023 guidelines where the dose mentioned was 18 to 27 gram daily the agents in order of preference for the management of stenotrophomonas maltophilia infection includes cefidirocol with a second agent septazidine avibactam and astodem combination minocycline with a second agent trivirosoprim sulfamethoxazole with a second agent or levofloxacin with a second agent so the preferred therapy for this infection includes either cefidirocol in combination with a second agent and this second agent in combination with cefidirocol may be minocycline, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole or levofloxacin or another preferred option is combination of septagenic avivectum with estronam. The second update for stenotrophomonas maltophilia infection include that TG cycline has been removed as a component of combination therapy and third update includes there is advice against the testing of septagenic for maltophilia infection. Here I finish. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. I would highly appreciate your feedback, suggestion or comments and see you in my next video on some very interesting topic. Till then goodbye and take care.